Welcome back to Hardware Unbox monthly GPU pricing update. This month we finally have some good news to share regarding graphics card pricing and availability, with things really starting to head in the right direction for buyers. Now of course inflated pricing isn't over yet and won't be anytime soon, but this month it has never been a better time to purchase a new GPU in the last year. Since our previous update there have been two new GPU launches onto the market, so let's take a look at how they are shaking up first. I am of course talking about the AMD Radeon RX 6500 XT, a card that we very much did not like, and Nvidia's GeForce RTX 3050, a reasonable product that was always going to be overpriced. These are the first cards of the generation to launch with an MSRP below $300, and as such have hit the market with pricing below $500. $500. I'll start here by looking at the RX 6500 XT. This is the first card of the generation that has basically been in stock and available since day one. Now, in typical AMD fashion, we did see a few GPUs hit the market at $200 US around launch day, but since then that price has largely disappeared in some regions. This has happened with the last couple of AMD launches, with retailers telling us at launch that resupplies for the card beyond the first batch were going to be above MSRP. Currently, if you want to buy an RX 6500 XT, they are available on the ever unreliable Newegg for as low as $260 US, but they can be found for cheaper in other regions like here in Australia. In fact, we have access to almost MSRP cards here. PC Case Gear will happily sell you a 6500 XT from PowerColor for just 320 Australian dollars, which equates to around 210 US before tax. Mine Factory in Germany will also sell you an MSI model for as low as 235 euros, which is just 10% over the US MSRP before tax. So it seems that the US market is lagging a little behind on pricing for this card right now. In our review of the 6500 XT, we said we wouldn't consider buying it at anything above the MSRP, and ideally this card should be priced more like $150 US or less. But it does seem that available stock is approaching the MSRP, which bodes well for the card and buyers. Don't be tempted to pay inflated prices on this one, as it looks like the MSRP is well within reach. As expected, things aren't looking quite as good for the GeForce RTX 3050. Pricing debuted around $600 for this GPU on retail shelves, which is absolutely disgusting for a $250 MSRP product. And while prices have since fallen quite a bit in the weeks after launch, the 3050 still sits nowhere near MSRP. The cheapest card on Newegg right now is only available in a bundle for $455, and that bundle includes a B450 motherboard, which Newegg might ship to you broken and then refuse a return on. So it's not exactly an enticing proposition. In Australia, again, we're in a slightly better position. The cheapest RTX 3050 is from Inno3D, and it'll set you back 550 Aussie, which is about 360 US before tax. Similar story at Mind Factory, where the cheapest RTX 3050s are also around that $360 US dollar price point before tax. This is still $110 of price inflation, but it does appear that pricing is creeping closer to the MSRP each week, which bodes well for patient buyers. In our review of the RTX 3050, we said the card ideally should cost no more than $370 US, so in some regions that pricing has become a reality. However, since our review, the entire market has dropped in price, so that $370 assessment is kind of no longer valid. For example, we showed the 3050 being much better value than the RX 6600 and a better buy than the 6500 XT at these prices. However, in regions where the 3050 is less than $370 US, the 6500 XT is now near MSRP and the RX 6600 can be had for just $430 US or thereabouts. This makes the RX 6600 about 19% more expensive for 26% more performance at 1440p, so the 6600 is still the better bang for buck purchase. But to be fair, the RTX 3050 isn't horrible at those prices, and it's a far better situation than if the card cost, say, $450. What we've seen here with the 6500 XT and RTX 3050 is also the case for most other graphics cards. Pricing for new in-stock models at major retailers globally is much lower than it has been over the last six months. Availability is also the best it has been, even for some of the most popular models. It wasn't too long ago that RTX 3070 Ti's were retailing for about 1800 Australian dollars or more. Today the cheapest models are $1300. RTX 3060s used to be 1200 AUD back in September, now they are more like $830, so that's a substantial price movement. 
One retailer told us that pricing is continuing to drop at a very decent pace for new shipments and resupplies, and this should be reflected in retail pricing over the next few weeks. It's not the case where GPU prices have hit the floor just yet. There is still a lot of room for pricing to improve, and it sounds like that will keep happening in the early parts of 2022. So why are GPU prices now falling? Well, the reason is very, very simple. The prolonged decline of profitability for cryptocurrency mining. Since the start of November, three and a half months ago, GPU mining profitability has been declining each month. Compared to this time last month, profits are down between 15 and 30% in most cases, depending on the GPU you have. Since October, profits are down over 50% based on what to mine data. This significantly increases the length of time it takes to turn a profit from buying a new graphics card, which reduces mining demand. On top of that, there's now an established months-long trend of declining profitability, which further hurts the appeal of adding new GPUs to mining rigs. That's not to say that miners have stopped buying GPUs altogether. The Ethereum network's difficulty is still rising, suggesting more GPUs, or at least some sort of mining hardware, are still being added. But higher difficulty hurts profitability hard when the value of the coins themselves are going down. There's also been a clear slowdown in the pace at which difficulty rises since about December, which is also good news for GPU buyers. The effect on GPU prices as measured in the scalper market is clear. Pricing for most models is at or very close to the lowest price recorded in the past 12 months. This is a look at NVIDIA GPUs and you'll see since December that prices for all models are trending down and the majority of these cards are now cheaper than the previous low in July. In terms of a month-on-month -month decline, NVIDIA GPUs have fallen in price by 7% on average, and we're finally seeing average price inflation below 100% for the first time in a long time. In January, the average price drop was 4%, and we haven't seen a monthly drop this large since July, so hopefully we'll see more green in this table next month. AMD cards haven't quite hit their lowest price in the last 12 months, but they are very close for all models except the 6700 XT. The pricing gap for the RX 6800 versus 6800 XT has finally been restored to a more normal level with that card seeing a decent drop in price, while availability is respectable for all models these days. In particular, the RX 6600 is now at its lowest price and can often be found even cheaper at retail stores than on the scalper market. Like brand new NVIDIA cards, AMD cards fell month on month, on this occasion to the tune of a 6% average. AMD price inflation is now at 70%, and I think there's a fair bit of room for that to get lower in the coming months. These are also the largest drops in price for over 6 months for most models. And like I was saying earlier, the price floor for new GPUs hasn't yet been reached, and I believe there's still quite a lot of room for pricing to get lower in the coming months, provided GPU mining doesn't make a sudden and sharp recovery. While prices today are now slightly lower than the previous best results in July of 2021, mining profitability today is significantly lower than it was in July. In many cases, profitability has halved. Right now, we appear to be in a period where a backlog of normal GPU demand is being cleared, and if this remains the case, the outlook for pricing is positive. The used market has seen much more significant price drops this month than in the new market. For NVIDIA's GeForce 20 series, pricing is down 13% on average, and cards are almost back to their MSRP levels, at least for some models. It's particularly good to see a bit of movement for products like the RTX 2060, which were hideously overpriced in prior months and are now approaching more reasonable levels. Similar story for the GeForce 16 series. We now have new GPU entrants that are competing with these products, finally, and that's helped see prices fall by 12% on average. Now, most cards here are still very overpriced, in particular for the GTX 1660 Super and GTX 1650 Super, but a strong reduction in price month on month is what I like to see. Pascal cards also fell in price by 14% on average, and we are so close to seeing every card sitting below its launch MSRP on the used market. It's unclear how much life Pascal products have left in them, not necessarily from a hardware failure perspective, but in terms of performance and driver support, so I wouldn't be surprised to see this market hit the hardest if used GPU prices continue to tumble. AMD's RX 5000 series fell in price by 13% month on month, although price inflation is still very high as these cards are exceptionally good at mining relative to their gaming performance. If you're still using an RX 5700 XT for gaming and not mining, I recommend trying to move that card on as soon as possible and instead upgrading to a newer GPU for only a small price difference. I think this series is also one where we'll see larger than average price drops in the coming months. 
And then we get to AMD's older GPU series, including the Evergreen Polaris. This is where we continue to see problems for the RX 6500 XT. Right now you can buy a used RX 574GB for just $183 on average, which is a decent stopgap solution and substantially cheaper than the 6500 XT's $270 asking price. Another suitable option would be the GTX 1650 Super, which are roughly the same price as the 6500 XT, but faster and more feature rich. If this sort of pricing trend continues for used products, the 6500 XT will need to keep getting cheaper and quickly hit the MSRP. I've been making these GPU pricing update videos for over a year now, and this is perhaps the only month where it's really felt like things are heading in the right direction. There's been a solid trend of GPU prices dropping for a few months now, and crypto mining profitability is at a very low level compared to most of 2021. When we're seeing the lowest new GPU prices in a year, the best availability in some time, and significant drops in the used market, pretty much everything we're looking to happen has happened. How long this trend will hold is, of course, unclear because we have seen a few months of price declines before. However, the general state of the GPU market is better than in those prior months, with a wider range of GPUs targeting more price points, and supply chain issues are slowly being resolved. So at least there is some hope that the days of GPU prices being three times above MSRP are now behind us. The main question at the moment is, when should you buy a GPU? Should you jump in now or continue to wait in the hope that pricing will get better? Or alternatively, should you purchase a stopgap GPU until pricing recovers? In my opinion, there's still a lot of room for GPU pricing to fall further, and the sentiment from retailers is that pricing will continue to come down in the short term. We're probably never going to see MSRP level pricing on some cards, especially those launched in 2020, but current inflation is still quite high at over 70% in most cases. Plenty of room for prices to still come down. So based on that, if you can wait a bit longer, that's what I would be doing, especially if you're interested in a high-end GPU, where waiting a month could mean a $100 drop in price or more. If you don't desperately need a new GPU, and let's face it, you've probably been waiting a while as is, then I'd be on the hunt for pricing closer to the bottom of the market, especially given trends are looking pretty reasonable. However, I would be keeping a close eye on the crypto market, especially mining profitability. If there starts to be a prolonged surge in crypto and mining, longer than say a couple of weeks, that's when I'd be looking to buy before prices go up again. Use your best judgment in those situations and you'll find yourself with the best deal and prevent a bit of sadness in a volatile market. If you do desperately need a new GPU, for example if your current card is not powerful enough for the latest games, well, pricing is the best that it's been for the last 12 months, so it's far from a bad time to jump into the market. Especially if you're targeting more the mid to lower end of the market, GPUs like the Radeon RX 6600 are offering good value right now. And of course, you can see our full thoughts on what GPUs to get in our latest Best GPUs video. As for stopgap GPU options, I generally wouldn't take this path and would just wait it out with what you have, but if you do need a stopgap GPU, I'd be looking at products that will lose the least amount in dollar value if the used market continues to fall. So something like an RX 570 that only costs around $200 would be a good bet here. If that falls to $150 or even $120 in price, you're only down $50 to $80 as opposed to getting a $400 card where if it loses a big chunk of its value, you're suddenly down $150 to $200, and that is gonna hurt your budget for a new card. Anything with more than four gigabytes of VRAM is more likely to lose value if crypto continues to fall, as those cards are more sought after for mining, so that's another factor to keep in mind, and probably why I'd also be looking at something like an RX 574 gigabyte as a stopgap GPU option. Anyway, that's it for this monthly look at GPU pricing, a good month. A positive month, let's hope that continues in the coming months as well, and hopefully we'll start to see prices get a little bit closer to the MSRP, which I think will be really the time to go and buy a new GPU if you have been waiting out all this time. If you're interested in supporting our testing, our analysis, things like that, then we do have our Patreon and Floatplane accounts. Links to those are in the description below. You'll get access to things like monthly live streams, Discord chat, um, behind the scenes videos, all sorts of good stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.